What's going on, Crypto Cousins? It's your Bitcoin baby daddy here with another episode. If you're new here, go ahead and hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button because I make these videos every other day or when I feel like it. You should know how it goes by now. All right. So today we're actually here. We're Entrepreneurial Joe. No, I'm not talking about Joe from A AVAX. But we're here with Entrepreneurial Joe. And he is a Bitcoin. Uh, what is it? National Bitcoin Distributor. Yeah, I think I got that right because you know I didn't want to get his name. I didn't want to get it wrong, guys. I could have gotten in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, so we got um Joe. He's a national Bitcoin distributor, and so today I wanted to bring Joe on the channel so that way he could talk to me about um what he does in the crypto space, how he got into the crypto space. We actually know each other. Um, we we met up through the bear market through um block spaces i don't know if you remember the older block spaces videos that i was making but um yeah. joe tell, tell the audience more about yourself ah my chest <laughs> yeah like you said my name is entrepreneur joe i am a national bitcoin atm distributor with a company called bitcoin depot and yeah like uh, mackenzie said we met back in the day back in the back in the beginning of a bull market or bear market after the 2017 peak you know we met each other at block spaces and we're actually going to bitcoin trading classes uh 2018 and 19. mackenzie showed up like once or twice but i was always freaking there like literally i it didn't make sense to me for, for the longest time but i'm so glad like block spaces in tampa that like, kind of created a community where people could you know get together and talk crypto and try to learn you know so i was that newbie for like two years straight there and now, now i got you know now i'm in the industry doing what i want to do which is great which what not necessarily what I want to do long term, but hey, I'm setting up Bitcoin ATMs everywhere. It's great. Another way for people to get a, a adoption pushed. You know, things like this were in Venezuela or Argentina when their markets collapsed. Well, they could have got rid of their cash real quick and put into something worth something before it devaluated. But uh, I look at that or what I'm doing now as a way to, I don't know, making sure that there's ways of people to, uh, to put cash into crypto before or after something like that would happen, you know. Um, but yeah, that's what I do. And uh, I appreciate you having me on the show, buddy. Oh, of course, man. You know, I had to get you on, I, I had to get you on the show. But um, so you, you brought up some good talking points that you were discussing. Um, so we're saying Bitcoin Depot, national Bitcoin distributor. So why is it that you have this position in general? Because um, I know when it comes to Bitcoin ATMs, back in the day i remember what i believe mike tyson had a bitcoin atm back in the day yeah he had a whole really? bitcoin like i think he had like one of the first bitcoin atms like a long time ago wow. um but regardless of that um we know the rules around bitcoin atms like um it's really difficult for the average person to actually own a bitcoin atm they go through all these like what is it? I don't I don't want to use the wrong words, but they go through all these old rules that uh, pretty much they're using to establish, hey, like the average person can't operate a Bitcoin ATM or you need X, Y and Z amount of money and X, Y and Z to even be able to operate a Bitcoin ATM. So what you're saying is you partnered with a company who has all these licenses, who has all these things to allow them to be able to put Bitcoin ATMs all over the place. Right, right. And you bring up a good point that I haven't thought about in a while, but yeah. So there's a lot of different restrictions that make sure that everybody can make their own Bitcoin ATM company, unfortunately. But there's a lot of AML or NM money laundering um, uh, things that companies need, need to really follow and report to the IRS. You can make sure that they let them know that if there's any kind of, um, I don't know, drug dealers or someone putting money into and buying crypto through there and believe it or not there's very little that's like the worst thing for any kind of drug dealer to do to put it through to put money into bitcoin because like it's a general ledger that everyone can access instead of just one bank right so they don't they don't even use banks for that so you wouldn't want to use bitcoin because everyone can access the, the entire general ledger right so believe it or not things like that are uh like money being laundered into crypto or anything like that is actually a very low rate of people that would even do that because that's the worst idea ever right um, I mean, but like fear they don't know how to do it properly quote unquote i'll leave it at that <laughs> correct 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 there, there, there are other avenues that uh but doing it through a bitcoin atm would not be the way to do it which is cool because believe it or not i, I know i run into a lot of different business owners like i've i've set up 75 locations already for the, for the year and i got started in april like I just got back from Costa Rica. 
I mean, right before I went, I got the job and I got back and I tried to figure it out. So all April, I was just really trying to figure things out. So I've been doing like four or five months and I already got 70, 75 machines out there with people because it's an easy sell, believe it or not. I mean, we set these up in gas stations, convenience stores, liquor stores, smoke shops, dispensaries, you name it. The um, hood. They, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, they just, it sounds like the hood. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, well, that's, I don't want to say that either, but that there's, it's, those locations are everywhere, right? But at the same time, um, those are generally good demographics as well, just because people primarily use cash or unbanked. And it's mm, great because it's, it's, there we go. That's why I said down. the hood. Right, right. Most people <laughs> well, at the same cash, time, I mean, it, it no, does, go ahead, go ahead. Go I'm sorry. A, I don't mean that. I oh, know you're good. It just does good service for whoever. Um, and you know, I, I didn't realize how many people were unbanked until I started working for Bitcoin Depot, which is, in my opinion, like the best company that's out there. And I don't even work for them. I'm, I'm just like a representative. They're like, I got to tell you how I actually got this job too. It's one of my favorite stories for sure. But uh, and it's new. So, but either way, uh, Bitcoin Depot is a, a great company to represent. I don't even necessarily work for them, which is great too. I just, I just send them the sales really I, I get the interest from the business owners since i'm already entrepreneur joe that's already been my brand i've been building and you know i work it out with the the store owners and then i basically pass it on to bitcoin depot i'm that i'm that middleman distributor which is really great which because they can't really any. you know they they can't be everywhere all the time so they get distributors to be able to like assist and you know they can't be in every little convenience store every this every that unless they have right. boots on the ground yep Yep. And they have a sales team and the other companies have sales teams as well. But I guess at least for Bitcoin Depot, uh, and hopefully I can say this, I know that distributors provide most of the business, which is great because they don't even have to pay us a salary. They hardly pay us anything, right? They're like, hey, you want to get uh, res uh, commissions or whatever, then you go, go do this A, B, and C. And we're like, okay, you know, we do the hard work without even getting paid to do it, really. Not that it's philanthropically free or anything i get paid but not necessarily directly with a yeah salary, you, you know? hey you don't got to you don't, you don't got to tell us how you get paid it's all good <laughs> but yeah, yeah. <laughs> um going back to something you just said you said you haven't yeah you didn't realize that how many people are unbanked in the u.s specifically yeah. in the u.s you didn't realize how many people were unbanked before start be, before beginning with this company. Now tell me some of the experiences, like the locations um, that you were just noticing, like, wow, these people really aren't unbanked in the States. So tell me more of those like um, encounters. So I haven't really had, I, I, I live and work in a bubble, right? So I'm in right. St. Petersburg, Florida, and I, I, life is good. So unfortunately I don't have as many experiences like going to these locations. Mm -hmm. uh, I say that because I've been working as a digital nomad remotely for uh, about a year now. So I just kind of like where I'm at now is a, is a uh, great um, um, co-working location in, in, in downtown St. Pete. And I just work on a rooftop making phone calls all day. So I'm almost like that, uh, uh, you know, phone salesman really. So I call these different locations, but in any case, there's about 15 million people in the U.S. that are unbanked, and I didn't realize how many people couldn't get a bank account or didn't want to get a bank account or, or cash primarily. It was an interesting fact to me, and it's still like a small part of the population since we're 300 million or more in the U.S., right? But at the same time, this just makes it easier to get cryptocurrency because, you know, we're, we're old school. Now, we're old school now. We're OGs now, right? 2017 OGs, right? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much so weight it, that holds. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's getting to be more and more as the years go on. Hey, like, oh, that shit, holds yeah, way yeah. more weight. I'm saying, dog. Yeah. You know, you know, for the people that like are like got in six months ago to a year, they're like, oh my god, 2017. I'm like, oh, I didn't think it was that long, but I guess four years later, it's almost five years later. Hey, we're we're kind of OGs. Right. It's know, almost a half a decade later. It's yeah. almost <laughs> half a decade later. That's that's yeah. a lot of time. Um, but regardless of that, I, a little bit of, of what I wanted to talk about is that is um, just piggyback off of what you were saying. I think, and this will be a little controversial for some people, but hey, this is what you get when you get on my channel. Um, I think specifically when you're like putting Bitcoin ATMs in like, um, lower income areas and whatnot, you pretty much get 
like the immigrants who don't want to get a bank account or the immigrants who can't get a bank account because they don't have um, any papers to get a bank account. Because you have to think about it. To get a bank account, you have to have X, Y, and Z. And a lot of immigrants that come to America, they don't have X, Y, and Z. So what if they had like a bank, account, like something here that they can like access, like somewhere where they can deposit cash and get something else. Now, when it comes to crypto, they can get cat, they can get crypto and then send it off to their home country or whatever, if they want to help family that way. And they don't have to go through Western Union or anything like that. Now, of course, that takes it takes a little bit um, more knowledge that they understand that they can do that. But eventually time catches up, you know, um, that knowledge eventually gets hit like, oh, you, you don't use Bitcoin to send money back to family. You could easily do that. You know what I'm saying? And so I think that's where um, a majority of the unbanked in the U.S. really is. Um, and not only that, but you also got to think about all the kids and stuff. But that's a whole nother conversation for a whole nother day. Um, right. But I guess tell me more about um, you said you, how you actually got the job. Oh, yeah, I want to tell you that. It's one of my, a good story. But let me go back to what you're saying, which is really interesting uh, as far as the immigration side of things. Um, that could definitely be a, a, a part of the people that are using that, and they should. That's great. I mean, it's actually creating them to be able to be their own bank. If you're unbanked or have your already have bank accounts, that's another way to have your own bank kind of thing like BitPay or something. Right. And I, and I mentioned BitPay, for instance, because do you know, uh, uh, Ross, you know, of Russ Albright, Albright? Yeah, of course. Right? I know the Ross Albright story for you know? sure. Dude, you won't believe this, but at Block Spaces uh, or Tampa Bay of Bitcoiners, whatever you want to look about on Meetup, but you, you know the group, Block Spaces. Last Wednesday, Ross Albright's mother came on there and was requesting, just, just not just requesting, like she sends money to some people in Cuba and or, or she tries to and some people have a really hard time getting money over there besides western union right and and there, it's kind of an immigration situation but she's trying to figure out how she could do it and i literally suggested why don't you just get a bit pay card either ship it to them or put their name on it ship it to you send it to them or whatever make their own account ship it over there then you could load that debit card with cryptocurrency and they could just easily cash it or change it into their currency and then use it as a regular debit card so that would be an easy way for them to do that just as much as uh immigrants here that could use um um uh, the, the the bitcoin depot app and to be able to buy cryptocurrencies that way um but at the same time you believe it or not like there's a lot of uh, just older generation too i mean that are dropping cash I, I've, I've seen plenty of uh, grandpas and grandmas uh dumping in a couple grand into the machine to buy their own cryptocurrencies so a lot of the time it's just an easier way to do it you know when we first got into crypto it was just like i felt like a wall especially going to barry's block space classes when he was teaching trading mm -hmm. i just felt like a wall i was just like i don't I, they kept telling me stuff and i'm a smart guy but i was like i don't i don't get it so there's still plenty of people that don't get it and this makes it an easy way for them to get crypto at least but, at least uh, have like a, a a solid entry at least have like a skin in the game you know what i'm saying yeah. people just want to have skin in the game so i guess um yeah. what we i want to talk about now is um what does it look like going forward um when it comes to like bitcoin depot um when it comes to like what do you feel like you want to do next in the space once you're finished at D bitcoin depot yeah i want to I I answer the question about uh how do i get in uh eventually but oh yeah, no you can tell question. that story first oh man you, but you're hitting me up with good questions what do i want to do next right like uh, uh, I definitely want to be more of a digital nomad. I, I'm working with this. I'm working with another company called Global Citizens of Bitcoin, or excuse me, excuse me, Citizens of Bitcoin. They're a global residency and uh, um, citizenship group uh, based in Miami, and I'm working with them to be able to travel digitally more re uh, remotely throughout different countries. Like I might go to Bali for a couple months, or Croatia, or uh, Dubai. Um, they can set me up with co-working locations and places to stay. So I'm looking into getting that into that 2022. So that's what I would like to do. As far as Bit, Bit, uh, Bitcoin Depot is considered uh, in the future, I'd, I'd love to just keep being able to be a distributor internationally. Right now, I just set up four machines this uh, week over in Quebec, Canada, and we just opened up in Quebec. We're already open in all Canada, 48 states in the U.S. And with El Salvador doing this i'm hoping brazil might come on board because i'm 
I'm from Brazil, so I have a Brazilian mm -hmm. passport too. So if I could go to Brazil and work, like I'm, you know, I'm single, I got no responsibilities, so I can just go. And you know, so that's what I'm hoping long term. Um, but yeah, can I tell you how I how I got into? Yeah, this, yeah, this tell me, tell the story. All right, because I'm best. I'm definitely a bit of a, a, a entrepreneur, Joe. Right, you got to be creative. So uh, I really wanted to get into some sort of role in a Bitcoin sphere, uh, and that's why I got into Bitcoin. That's why I targeted Bitcoin Depot. At first, it was Bitcoin of America because I was like, that sounds like a cool name. Uh, let me try them. I was somehow able to interview, and they were still kind of growing. So they're like, they're like, let's wait till summer. Maybe we can onboard you later. And I was like, okay, cool. That's three months away. I'm not waiting. So let me hit up like uh, Bitcoin Depot. And it's not easy to get into in front of these people, but I got creative and I hit up, uh, he's my friend now, we've been talking for a while. I, I, I'm so glad he got me into the industry, changed my life. Um, but I, I looked up Bitcoin Depot on LinkedIn, tried to apply, tried to send him an email, I didn't get anything. And I was like, all right, let me find one of their sales guys and hit him up, sent a, a friend request, got denied. Later, I told he told me that like, you look like a scammer. Cause I, you know, you know those uh, LinkedIn profiles that says, uh, a Bitcoin enthusiast, well, a Bitcoin trader, blah blah blah. I was like, oh shit! Uh, I, uh, uh, I look like that. Motherfucking I didn't know. scammers! Fuck! <laughs> yeah, Fuck. I didn't know I looked like a scammer. <laughs> so uh, eventually, uh, what I did was I, I found a region where he was in, and I was like, all right, he's the sales guy in this region. Let me look up a Bitcoin Depot ATM in the region. I was like, all right, cool. And then I found a store. I had a bunch of them, but I found a store and then I saw their 1-800 number and I was like, all right, let me call. I called on 1-800. I was like, hey, listen, I'm the, uh, I'm the store owner for this location. This is the address. I can't get a hold of this guy, first and last name, this guy. Can you give him my cell phone and have him call me? I changed numbers. Can you just have him call me? Like, I, I, I want to talk to him about the machine. It sounded like a customer, right? And I was like, all right, let's see. Let's see. Let's roll those dice and see how those go. And then 10 minutes later, he calls me. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, what's up? Hey, uh, I, I try not to like lose him. I was like, hey, this is Joe Miller. I really want to work for Bitcoin Depot, and this is how I got your information. Uh, I didn't know how else to reach out to you. I'd love to just talk about how I could possibly do this. And he was only worked for the company for like two or three months. And his mentor that he already had, and they, they only had like five or six salesmen at the company at the time. That's it for, for this. That's it. It's five or six salesmen. But he knew the right guy to put me in touch with the highest distributors where they have like uh, 30 to 40 distributors and I didn't have the experience. I just had like the energy and I was like, listen, I'm a Bitcoin nerd. Listen, listen, I got my star, star Wars tattoo right by my star Trek tattoo is like, you got to let me in. Like I'm all about this nerdy stuff like Bitcoin. I got Bitcoin tattoo right here on the, my heart, heartbeat line. Like if it goes, if it goes, uh, here's going up. If it goes down, there's my blood type just in case, you know, good guy. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I'm all into it, dude. So I sold myself and he, and I got into it, you know. So I ain't mad at that. That's how you do it, though. That's how you do it. Oh, man. Yeah. You have so got... entrepreneurial Joe. What you mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's a good story, though. Like, yeah, man. I tried to hit up. Uh, you know, I, I I tried to do the regular, do an application, didn't work. I hit up the guy. I'm a scammer. I just called a location. <laughs> And said, "Hey, this, this, that. Oh, bro, that's a good story. But the thing is, you right. went after you. You didn't let not being able to get a response back stop you. That's the difference. People like people, people, people really say, oh, I want something. I want to be this. I want that. But the moment they get stopped by the first roadblock, they give up because they don't know what to do next. Yet you, right. you're already in the crypto space. You're like." I know I can be valuable to somebody. I want to do this. No, let me go get them. I don't care if I'm underqualified. I want in. I want in. Right. And then they get and they let you in. Right. Yeah. It's yep. a difference. It's, it's a funny. difference, man. Right. And I, I'm, I'm becoming quickly one of their top ten distributors. I mean, they only have like thirty to forty, but they they let so many distributors on that didn't get a single sale or just gave up. And it's kind of complicated. I kind of get it. Like. The whole sale the selling and, and you're only like a distributor and you're not getting paid anything until you get finally paid months down the road and uh yeah i just i just know uh, my mentor or, or, or the guy that i work with now like directly above me he's like joe like i i 
you, you sold me on you and you actually did it. So he's like, a lot of people already have the experience and been doing this forever. And they don't even call me back. They don't even get a sale going, you know? So like, they're like, dude, you did good. I was like, oh, thanks, man. You know? Yeah, so big dog shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the grind, nah, but it's, it's the grind. It's because you 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 went you went to go get something you wanted, and then you got it, and that's what you that's what you were supposed to do. So I yeah. guess um my main question right now is um what what do you want to do next? Oh no, you um, did no 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 sorry yeah. so no that's not because we <laughs> talked about you what you want to do you want to be able to move you want to do that. My question is. Um, what's the main message that you want to give to my audience? Oh yeah, okay. Well, hey, everybody likes to make money, right? Like I literally pay some like people a hundred dollars a referral for, let's say, you know, a gas station, or a convenience store, or a liquor store, smoke shop, dispensary that doesn't have a Bitcoin ATM in there. And if you know the owner, you can always just shoot me an email, entrepreneurjoe one at gmail dot com. You can shoot me an email if you got a referral or whatever. Hit me up. We can somehow communicate. But I like to give back. So and it's just an easy way to make 100 bucks if you find an owner that doesn't have one. You already know him. You can be like, hey, listen, I know a guy that can pay you a couple hundred bucks a month to put a Bitcoin ATM in here and bring new customers and give something for old customers to use and make money just putting, you know, the size of a chair. You know, so an ATM is really the size of a chair. Just it's put right it in there. your building. Take as long as you have an outlet and it just plugs in and it just yeah, does there. Exactly, an owner gets paid to do it, and it's cool. It's, everyone's talking about it, so and it's a way for other people to make money too. So if they got uh, any kind of uh, idea or whatever, you can find me on Instagram and LinkedIn under Entrepreneur Joe. So that's my brand. So yeah, always trying to give back and um, yeah, push adoption. So. Oh, big facts. Well, we always got to push adoption. All right, then I guess my last question, and it's an easy one: price yeah. prediction. Let's go. Let's go. Ooh. Price prediction. Um, oh. you don't. You don't gotta. Well, we're gonna use times because I I I want I, I want to hear some times, um, price prediction by the end of the year and price prediction in four years. Hmm. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. So you, you say that's an easy question. Okay. I guess it's. I, yeah. All right. It's a price prediction. The, there's no wrong answers because end- we're all gonna be wrong. Right. <laughs> we're all <laughs> we gonna be wrong. wrong. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I'd like to join the bandwagon. Uh, and say, yeah, by the end of the year, hopefully we had 100K. That would be freaking great. Um, I'm also a, a big bear right now, like I, I may have said earlier, um, because I want the market to go down for a year or six months or whatever. I'm finally starting to get some more money where I can just send it to crypto. And before, and if you're getting in, if you want to send money to crypto, just make sure you're also sending money to savings. Because that way, if something pops up, you don't have to pull out your investment money. You can just pull out the savings money. So it's almost like having a reserve tank, per se. So your investments are your reserve tank. You don't want to you don't want to use that gas unless you have to, and you want to keep money in your bank account or or, or in cash. That's where I got messed up. But anyways, so uh, end of the year, hopefully 100k. If, if it goes lower, then awesome. I'm ready to put my DCA hat on and just freaking buy up. You know, like just a hungry, hungry hippos that stuff. You know. Just, Buy, you know. No, and, hey, uh, oh, is that time? <laughs> go ahead, give yeah. me a little bit of this. That time yeah. again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me go ahead and slide that. All right. So, exactly. but you're a big bear, so you want it. You want it to come down, but we're gonna ride the hundred k Mimi for a while. Yeah, um, yeah. And then, and then what do you million, expect? Four years. Four years a milli? Well, I, I would only assume. I mean, the last bear market only lasted from uh, peak of 2017. I guess 2018, 2019, and then drop, and then started recovering. So, if we're only gonna have a year bear market, we've been having a two-year bull market basically since 2020, 2019, whatever you want to call it, from the bottom. Um, yeah, I think that would be a good cycle. Hopefully, maybe a million. I don't know. But but what I'm worried about is what's gonna really have to happen for something like Bitcoin to be worth that much. Is that when the dollar co- collapses? Nah, that's not happening. Well, I don't know. That's why I tell everybody to make sure you diversify your savings, whether it's have multiple cryptos, have some gold and silver, you know, just just, just spread across the board and, and have a little bit of money in the bank, maybe a little bit of money in cash we can, like whatever, start somewhere, but just divvy it up just in case, you know, that does happen. I don't know. Uh, Venezuela, Argentina already happened, Turkey's tiltering. Um, I doubt it'll happen here. But what if it does? Just make sure you have a little bit of everything, you know. I'm out of that. That's true. Um, Millie, 
like I said, I, I'm a, I'm gonna ride the I'm gonna ride the hundred K meme until we get there, and then when we get right. there, I'm gonna be like deer eyed open, like I don't know what to do now. <laughs> <laughs> like oh um, we sell i guess i don't know but um i'm definitely um, i'm definitely on the 100k mimi camp for now until 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 proven otherwise um in in four years four years we have another happening already happen and we're gearing up we're, if we're not gearing up we're already in the middle of another bull market i'm i'm just gonna say I'm gonna say half a mil just because it's a cool even number, okay. and I just I, it really depends on where the top is from here, because depending on where the top is from here, if the top's like 250, then half a mil is not really like if the top is 250, I'd say we do another five x, you know, and sure. another five x that's over a milli the next cycle, so that's that's that's. You know, that's uh but I wanna say I'm on the hundred K camp for right now by the end of the year. And if not, we're wrong. Oh well, keep it moving. And then four years from now, half a mil to eight hundred thousand per Bitcoin. I like it. I like, I like it, it, man. I like it. Yes. But um now, I got a question for you real yeah. quick if you feel right. So you said you're not too sure what to do when it hits a hundred K uh you've heard of blockfi right yeah um i don't I, I don't trust i don't trust exchanges with my coins well you I, can I, borrow well, against it well yeah so maybe so, so here's the thing look at the block uh visit block spaces or something sometime because i think a lot of us we're gonna we're gonna just simply stake our bitcoin so we don't sell it and when we stake it for a loan you take out a loan then you have interest payments but when you're staking it you're also like giving it out for them to use a loan and, it's, and that's what the banks do. They get paid when they make the loans. But now you're giving the loan out and interest on those payments, depending on how much Bitcoin you put in, the interest you receive usually pays off the interest that you need to pay off. So that money is almost free money. And that's already kind of making those payments for you. And then you know, it, that, that means you have that money to, to mess around and play with and your, your Bitcoin is still yours. You just have to eventually pay that off. So you just you, have to be able to pay off the loan after and get your Bitcoin back. Now yeah, the only thing I'm not the only thing I'm worried about is you remember the bear market. We had a lot of exchanges go down. We mm -hmm. had a lot of exchanges go down. Um and after watching that, I'm like, I don't care what you're offering me. If you can <laughs> offer me this much on my Bitcoin, I'm just gonna hold on to it. I'm glad I'm glad you wanna offer me that, but why do you want my Bitcoin so badly? No, nah, I'm okay. <laughs> Everybody's selling what you want, my Bitcoin. No, sir, I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want to do it. You can't have it. But um, yeah, I but it. I'm I, I'm I'm in a lot of um, decentralized finance on Ethereum, so I've been doing a lot of borrowing and lending and that kind of thing. So I'm hopefully I can borrow. The thing is, you can only borrow as much. Like you can't borrow up to the total amount of what you have. You can only borrow up to half. And yeah. half of that of whatever, like you know, I, I'm I'm guesstimating a certain amount I'll have by the end of the bull market. Half of that, I don't think, gets everything that I want to get done. Like it doesn't accomplish all the goals that I, I set for myself when I first started this journey. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's why I I don't know if I'm gonna be able to borrow a loan. But we'll see when that time comes because you 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 never know. I swear to God, you never know. But right. guys, um, I want to say, uh, Joe, thank you so much for yeah, Joe, thank you so much for coming on the channel. Tell everybody where they can find you again. Yeah, Entrepreneur Joe. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever. Entrepreneur Joe one at Gmail. If you got some questions or whatever, or if you got some leads, let me know. I'll be happy to Venmo Cash App or send you some Bitcoin for a lead that goes through. You know, so that's how you can find me. And thanks for having me. Of course, man. Yeah, look, I'm. I'm going to always show respect to the people that I remember in the bear market because <laughs> <Look, Yeah. laughs> you get my utmost respect. But other than that, guys, check me out later. Take it easy. Peace.